YouTube asks, what's the future of this channel? I don't have like an end game here. Uh, you know, I think it's just kind of like anything in the entertainment world. It's all about who you know, and all about who will stumble across your channel and maybe give you a shout out. I know a few channels that were lower than me by quite a bit and they get that right connection. The person maybe shouts them out on Twitter or, you know, to their to their people on YouTube. And the next thing you know, bloop, 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 their numbers skyrocket by 40, 50, 100,000 subs overnight. The Patriotic Assassin asks, will you ever do another collaboration video like the ones you did with Chris Stuckman and Schmoes No? Maybe with people like Jeremy Johns or The Flick Pick. I reached out to all of them several times over the years. Uh, Jeremy Johns never returned my calls, never responded to any of my messages. I'm small, I'm peanuts, I get it, why would he? And my show, you know, a couple years back wasn't as polished or as good. So to him, it's probably like, what's, what's this do for me? What's the point? Flickpick actually said he was gonna do my show. Uh, what's that guy's name? John Flickinger, I think. He said he was gonna do my show a few years back like three years ago and kind of stood me up last second when I had the script and stuff prepared. Uh, people I have had on like Chris Stuckman and some of those others, they never really, they don't give me anything in return and I write their scripts for them. They never invite me onto their show and they never tell their audience about me. So what, what did I gain from that other than giving them more exposure? Joshua Garcia asks, how much does YouTube pay you? I'm not gonna beat around the dick, they pay dog shit at this point. There's just too many chefs in the kitchen. There's so much competition fighting for people's views. And I can't, you know, I'm not, I'm like not knocking YouTube, that's just how it is. And they don't have the ads to support all the channels. Month average is 150 to 200. That's pretty much what I bank on from YouTube ad revenue, $150 to $200. There is, of course, other revenue sources. I make money from Patreon, from pledges. I think I have 52 people supporting me over there. They're not giving me ridiculous amounts of money. So it's just another couple hundred bucks. Then you have the, the new YouTube join thing that I have going. I only have like 10 supporters there right now. So that's maybe another, you know, 40 or 50 bucks. So it's just little chunks of money here and there that total up. I'd say from YouTube and Patreon and the the uh, community thing, 500 bucks a month on YouTube. Realistic fact is, I'm a web developer who can charge anywhere from 80 to 150 dollars an hour depending on who the client is and depending on what the project is. I mean, in one hour or two hours, I've made up one of my revenue streams. In six hours, I've completely blown everything out of the water so, so this isn't the smart this isn't the smart bank for me to do and then there's plenty of freelance work out there it's just this is the passion Jackson Schroyer says I've been watching your channel for a couple years I remember a point a few years ago when you really seemed to stress losing followers and interest in the channel mentioning that if you didn't receive more funds soon you'd most likely stop pursuing having a YouTube channel was this actually helped by a lot of donating or did your following significantly increase or did you just decide to push through and continue with YouTube regardless? Love your content. Adam, keep doing what you're doing. Go Cougs. Thank you, Jackson. That was very nice to say. I'm glad you've been watching. It's certainly changed a lot on the channel over the years. It started out as Movie Feuds. That was the channel name. And it was Corey and I doing the show. Then it turned into Feud Nation because I thought I could take it all, take it all on and do like Movie Feuds and Video Game Feuds and sports feuds and things I really didn't even know about. And then finally, Adam does movies. After talking to people, doing research of my own, I learned that YouTube really, you know, it, it really tries to find a bucket to put channels into, whether it's a parody channel, whether it's a video game channel, yada, yada, yada. So having Feud Nation, which is already confusing to people, what that doesn't mean anything. Having all these kind of random videos about different topics, that was just, I wasn't picking up steam. I was actually losing views and subs and just wasn't going anywhere. So by saying, Adam does movies, you get it. You, you know, there's an asshole named Adam and he's talking movies and maybe having sex with movies because this show's immature and inappropriate. So I went with a title that was kind of sexual, a little innuendo in there. The, the channel grew actually quite a bit after I rebranded. I, I jumped like 15,000 in a year, 20,000 in a year, which was awesome. And now it's it's plateaued. As far as why I continued, yes, a couple years ago, 
I just, I evaluated everything. I'd been doing the channel for three years. Uh, Corey was gone. I, you know, I was doing everything myself. I had kid, I had little tiny kids at home. I had, I had a sick wife. Uh, my wife, Lindsay is, you know, she's got, she's got a disease. I, I don't talk about it, but it's, it's, it's her thing. And you know, we're working through it, but it, it takes up a lot of my time and energy. Looking at the YouTube thing, I'm like, this, this silly show really worth doing. And so I, I, I put out a video, you know, it was kind of this poor me thing. I wasn't trying to be. I just basically put it on the line. I'm like, look, if you want this show to go, I need to see growth and I need to see support. Otherwise, what the, you know, what the fuck am I supposed to do? Just, just do this show for basically nothing. We're, we're at, we're, we're past the fun stage in life. You know, I'm 36. Uh, I'm not in college. I'm not, you know, I'm not uh, single or I'm not just with a, with a wife and no kids. I have responsibilities. So the, the, the honeymoon phase is over on YouTube. Now it's time to get serious. I think that's what you see with a lot of channels. What happened was, yes, I did get support. Usually it was just comments, people saying, I love your show, don't stop, I wish I could support you, blah, 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 which was nice. I also had a bunch of Patreon support. There was like a dude giving me 150 bucks a month by himself, and he did this four or five months. It, to the point where I'm on Twitter saying like, hey, man, you don't need to give me this much money. Like, I, I really appreciate it, but don't, you know, you do you first and, and put money in the bank and I don't know your your routine. I don't know what you have for, for funds, but please don't kill yourself over my, my show. It's getting kind of sappy, but we're going to sap the shit out of it at the end here. And if you are a Patreon, you already know this years ago. But for those of you that don't know, and it's been a long time, but the, the hurt is still real for me. In high school, my father, my hero, uh, he died in a car accident. Some people have good dads, some people have garbage dads, some people don't know their dads. I unfortunately had an amazing dad who was was killed way too young. In fact, I think he was only three years older than I am right now. Uh, so, you know, relatively young guy. I, I'd been filming with my friends, never had my own camera since I was in third grade. You know, he was a big movie guy though. We went to all the movies together. Um, he's the one that really got me into movies. When he died, it, it, it just, it killed. It killed me. And it was two weeks before Christmas. No presents under the tree yet. We're living in a, a rental house while our, our, their new house was gonna, our new house was gonna be built. Uh, it was just a disaster. A, a week after his death, my mom comes up to me with a box. He had apparently bought me a camera at Best Buy, hadn't wrapped it yet and tucked it into the garage. He bought me a video camera, a, a, a guy that I had no idea, and I don't think he knew anything about filming. You know, he, he, he made a conscious decision to go to Best Buy. He knew that I loved this, and he bought me an expensive camera. And he put it in the garage, and he was gonna wrap it and give it to me at Christmas time. I, I think back at that, and I, and I saw the support come in at the time when I was doing my woes me thing, and if, if I stopped doing the show, when it is seeing growth, when there is people that like what I'm doing, I'm making people laugh and I'm talking about movies, then I'm not only letting myself down, I'm letting my dad down. So the show's going on. The show will continue to go on, regardless if I get the support or not, if people you know pay a dollar or two. We're past that point as well. Yes, I could easily make money elsewhere, Yes, I could save myself a lot of sleepless nights doing this, by just not. Uh, but we have we have one life on this earth, and I'm going to I'm going to make the most of it. And I think this is the the path to go. Still, I will do another Q and A. I will hopefully get it done sooner. It's just these ones. I try to get my entertaining videos out more. You know, I try to get my movie feuds written. I try to get my cringes out. I try to get Adam Rants out and uh, Deep Inside Movies, the newest show, that I really, I, I really like how it's going so far, a couple episodes in, I hope you like it too. But those four main shows, plus I have Bad Movie Pitch, which is actually, I've only done a few, and I think that show has a lot of legs as well, I just haven't, haven't, you know, had time to really focus on that one yet. But that would be another show. So five main shows on this channel to look forward to this year. I'll do two more. Favorite director, Steven Spielberg, 
And because of the old school, I just respect the shit out of him. He's the one that got me into movies more than any other director with Jaws, with Jurassic Park, with E.T., with uh, Indiana Jones along with George Lucas. Um, so definitely Steven Spielberg, old school director, and David Fincher, I think, is one of the most powerful directors out there. You got Seven, you got Fight Club, one of the best movies ever made. You have uh, Panic Room, like even a simple concept like Panic Room he made awesome. You have The Zodiac, which is fantastic. You have The Game, which is criminally underrated. You have uh, Social Network, which was a pretty boring topic that he made badass. Uh, Gone Girl, you have, you have just so many good movies by this director. Sammy Jabber, can you rank the Mighty Ducks movies? D2, Ducks 1, D3. Okay, that's it, I'm done. If you wanna ask a question, shoot it in the comments below. Hopefully it's less time than three months from now. But if it does take three months, stick around for the answer, okay? Thanks for watching.